please welcome, with the greatest possible respect, Lenny McClay. I'm the governor! been to an unlicensed fight before you ain't seen nothing yet tonight this week explores the dangerous world of unlicensed boxing headbangers of the outlawed ring As some boxing fans were looking out their tickets for Bruno's Albert Hall comeback, others found their way to a less prestigious London venue. Its whereabouts until a few hours before, a close-kept secret. As the police cruised warily by, 800 men and a few women were searched for offensive weapons before being allowed further. This is the shadowy world of unlicensed boxing. Not illegal, but an outlaw sport. The authorities would dearly like to stamp it out as a threat to the official game and a danger to the participants. It's the way that unlicensed boxing is run that incenses its critics and delights its supporters. The utter disregard of any rules about the health and safety of boxers in the outlaw ring provokes powerful passions. is dangerous it's got to be stopped and somebody's going to get hurt and i mean not hurt they're going to get killed and this is crazy the spectator wants to go and see boxing okay they go to the albert hall okay and watch someone jab and move all night long okay if someone wants to go and see a tear up they go to an unlicensed do okay and see two men absolutely tearing into each other trying to prove a point okay see so who's the toughest it's not a game of skills it's a game of arsehole Professional boxing at the Albert Hall. Here, everything is squeaky clean and beautifully organised. Contests are strictly governed by the rules of the British Boxing Board of Control. At the ringside, there are doctors present, ready to deal with an injured boxer. Before and after fights, there are medical checks, weigh-ins to ensure there's no mismatch between the contestants all measures to minimize the risk involved in two men trying to bash each other's brains out. Yet, despite all that, there's been a series of tragic injuries in this, the official regulated ring. Michael Watson lapsed into a coma after a fearsome super middleweight title fight in September. He's still in hospital, seriously brain damaged. Last week, 23-year-old Kian Kwok Lee, an amateur who was wearing a headguard, needed brain surgery when he collapsed. Every time a boxer takes a severe blow to the head, the brain inside his skull can twist and tear to cause internal bleeding. To avoid death or brain damage, says Peter Hamlin, Michael Watson's surgeon, there must be a speedy operation. Basic injury to the brain is usually minor which is reflected in the fact that they can walk and speak afterwards. But the main problem is the formation of the blood clot, which has caused pressure on the brain. And if one can remove the blood clot before there is significant damage to the brain underneath, then the likelihood is that they would recover very well from that sort of injury. In the last three years, six British boxers have needed surgery to relieve potentially fatal pressure on the brain after being injured in official amateur or professional fights. Peter Hamlin, who's operated on three of them, says there's a golden hour within which surgery has to happen to avoid permanent brain damage. Young amateur boxer Robert Darko didn't reach the operating theater quite quickly enough. 
1989, Robert was challenging for the London Amateur Lightweight title. He lost his fight, but didn't seem hurt. Only later did he begin to feel sick. It was some time before he got the surgery he needed. Today, Robert still goes to the Battersea Amateur Boxing Club, but the damage to his brain has forever denied him his ambition to become a professional. I actually don't have any recollection of the fight. Um, I remember the boxing match I had here um, about a month before, but the actual fight, I have no recollection. Complete it? blank? Yeah, yeah. How fit are you now? Um, a lot less fitter than I was, because at the moment I can't run, so I'm not doing any sort of road work. So my fitness is uh, a lot less. I get tired after, you know, little exertions of energy. Yeah. Boxing is special, indeed unique, because the contestants set out to hurt each other. Injuries in other sports are normally accidental. But the Boxing Board of Control argues that if these terrible tragedies can happen in boxing that's officially supervised, then unlicensed boxing must be much more dangerous. Whenever there's a particularly bad accident in the ring, the ban all boxing brigade come out of the corner. But the supporters of boxing say that if the sport were made illegal, then it would simply go underground. Tonight, we're going to see what unlicensed boxing is really like. This week invited Barry McGuigan, former professional featherweight world champion, to watch these fights with us. This was his first ever visit to unlicensed boxing. McGuigan has a personal interest. One of his own opponents collapsed and later died of brain damage. Reg Parker, prince of unlicensed boxing. Reggie's ambition is to make a lot of money, he told us. One day, he wants to be a legitimate boxing promoter. But not quite yet. Reg used to be a headbanger in the unlicensed ring himself, but now owns a fitness center in Eltham. It doesn't seem to have made much difference. Come on! Come on! By night, Reg provides security services for pubs and clubs that need a bouncer on the door. He's now in serious training for the World's Strongman Contest to be held in South Africa later this year. Despite public anxiety about boxer safety, Reg, the promoter, is unconcerned about the lack of care his unlicensed shows offer. Licensed, people are weighed in, OK, checked medically, um, generally looked after, OK, and an unlicensed, they had no weigh-ins. Uh, could be like a stone, two stone weight difference in some fights. Uh, we try and match them up as best as we can, but, you know, you normally get one fight has got a lot more experience than the other. Uh, we don't have no doctors, we are our own doctors. Um, you know, if it gets too bad, then we'll jump in and stop it. Dr. Reg Parker's most notorious promotion was to stage a challenge to Lenny Mean Machine McLean, giant of the unlicensed ring known as the Governor. There's only one Lenny McLean, there'll never be another Lenny McLean. Lenny McLean was the godfather of, of unlicensed boxing, and uh, there'll never be another one. You know, he couldn't compare, couldn't walk in his shoes. Headbutting the governor was the worst mistake Brian Mad Gypsy Bradshaw ever made. The uncontrolled violence showed the depths to which unlicensed boxing can sink. The referee, struggling to restrain the enraged Lenny, was referee again at last Monday's unlicensed event. Oh, he was knocked out, obviously, but his tongue was... Uh, I grabbed hold of his tongue first and laid him on his side. We understand Mad Gypsy Bradshaw recovered. Roy York, like the hero of the film Rocky, keeps his strength up, heaving around great sides of meat in Smithfield Central Market. Roy began boxing at the age of 10. 
sport both as a professional and an unlicensed fighter and didn't give up till he was 40. And the Smithfield Butchers got a face to prove it. Well, I always went forward, so that's why I got the nose. How about your teeth? Uh, well, I haven't got a few, like, you know, I lost a few. I had me front load knocked out and an unlicensed head headbutt to the mount. I mean, these things do go on. I mean, it was bitten once, uh, kicked, you know. But, uh, bitten? Where was that? It's back the gum shoe, that, and bit me on the neck. But uh, what he didn't realise, it helped, you know. <laughs> I knocked him out. Well, this is the, the bill, the contest you're going to be refereeing. What do you reckon to uh, to the fighters here? How about Dave the Bomb, for example? Well, I reckon he's a good chance. So I've been in the gym with the boy to have a look, see what it was like. The sight of a title contender like Dave the Bomb being trained by the referee might raise an eyebrow in licensed boxing, but not in Reggie's gym. What about your opponent? What kind of fights are you going to be? I don't know. We'll have to see when we get in there. Do you know what he's like? No, I don't know nothing about him. Nothing about him at all? No, no. So you've no idea how he's going to box or no. what it's going to be like? No. Do you like it that way? Yeah, it's a challenge, isn't it? Dave was clearly familiar with his right to remain silent, reticent about his past record and current form. Padding along the Elton pavement, Dave looked street fighter rather than boxer. Really, the rude boy colour, yeah. black, really. Okay, Ted the Hat, also on Reg Parker's bill, makes a performance out of a punch-up. Ted would never be allowed in the professional ring. As a result of an accident in prison, he's got a metal pin in his skull holding his head together. Big brave Ted was doing some exercise and broke his neck, you know. And the doctor say he's never be the same again, but that was not to be, so, as you can see. So you did have a broken neck? Yeah. Doesn't worry you boxing now? No, no. Do you think you'd be passed fit by a boxing board doctor if they examined you? <laughs> well, no. But Ted argues that unlicensed boxing helps people like him steer away from trouble. It's something good to do, it's positive. You know, there's a lot of things you can do on the street that's going nowhere but down. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, this feels right. Boxing can put you in the limelight. If you think there's something there for you, end of the rainbow, boxing from where I'm coming can get you there. Move forward on your punches, Steve. After three years as a professional, Steve Conway came to the conclusion he was just being used as a punch bag for the benefit of more likely lads. Now Steve's another unlicensed boxer. So I love it. Ever since, I, ever since he boxed in your home, I, I love it. It's, it's just something in me. Left, left, up, left, ratchet. Keep it going. Steve is coached by his father, Ricky, formerly of the Parachute Regiment. Well, they let your, your emotions out, doesn't it? I'd sooner Stephen do that in a ring than go out in the street and have a fight and go to prison, which he was doing years ago. I mean, I threw him in the ring. I threw him in, what, when he was 29? I said, why don't you go and earn some money with him? Which he's doing. He's never looked back. I don't think you have yet. Oh, he's never looked back. <clears throat> I'll do it all over again. Only better. I'll tell you what he's known out in the game, and we all love him for it, not just because he's my son. Nice boy, Conway. Nice boy, he's a nice boy. He didn't know how to fly. And he comes back from the dead. If you knock him down, he gets up again. And that's the two lovely things about Steve. He just doesn't give in. The thing about the stop is knock his father, though, and that's never happened in 60 fights. 60 fights? 60 fights never happened. How old are you now? Tell him, go on. 37, come up 38. And you're talking about license. What's the difference between a license fight and an unlicensed? Well, what's the difference between being married and having a license and living with a woman not having a license? Same thing, is it, or what? You ask the people who ain't married whether they should have a license or not. The license just makes them think they're doing it legally. I, I used to go to the pro fight and, and it, it, I was sitting like a moron. Everyone's sitting like a moron. You know, but you go to these unlicensed fight and it's, it's, a, it's a night out. It's, the atmosphere is absolutely electrifying. On the night, Ricky wears his Pearly King outfit. In the red corner from Lewisham, Steve Conway. For this pounding, Steve picked up a purse of £250, plus a share of ticket sales. 
Steve lived up to his reputation as a man who didn't know when he was beaten. But at the end of a bruising battle, referee Roy York made him the winner. It was not a generally popular decision. But now there was a new challenge to the referee. The police had come to reassert officialdom's disapproval of unlicensed fighting. Do the fences come to light? Because I've obviously got to check with the British Board of Boxing Control, because we've got no doctors here uh -huh. tonight. When you get the next bout under control, undergoing, mm -hmm. I yeah. will be watching to see what's been going on. The next fight was between Ted the Hat and the mysterious Danger Donovan. While the police presence may have encouraged promoter and referee to keep the violence within bounds, this was a rough bout. With all his experience of fighting his way to the World Championship, Barry McGuigan had strong views on the headbangers of the outlawed ring. There were a number of times uh, in a number of the fights that there were rabbit punches uh, where the fella hit his opponent in the back of the neck, hit him in the kidneys. The referee never even cautioned him, never mind warned him. The guy announced in the ring weights, yet the boxers told me they, were, they never weighed him. Some of them looked much heavier than others, and yet the, the weights were announced as reasonably sort of similar in the ring. You know, it's all very shady. If you looked in the corner between rounds, most of the corners didn't put Vazin on. There's one or two of the fight fighters cut. There was no cotton buds to stop the cuts. At one stage, a guy used a rough, dirty towel to stop the bleeding. The rounds went way beyond the time they should have gone. It was supposed to be two-minute rounds. We timed, I think, at one stage, two minutes, 40 seconds. Um, everything was wrong about it. McGuigan was particularly critical of the knockout he'd seen in the first bout. The referee allowed him to take far too many punches and he was badly knocked out at the end. What I want to know is, did this kid go to the doctor? Uh, or did he go to the hospital? There was no doctor ringside. Scotland's most famous boxer, Ken Buchanan. And they're even punching after the bell. Well, that's it. All three gave nine rounds to Buchanan. Today, the hard-won prize money is gone. Ken Buchanan is back working at his old trade as a joiner. Doctors now largely agree that the hammering a boxer's head gets over the years eventually takes its toll. Ken feels his own brain has suffered. My memory is pathetic, like, you know what I mean? I just keep on forgetting what I've exactly done, like, you know what I mean? Do you think that's a result of boxing? Oh, it definitely is. I mean, there's nothing else because, you see, it's been the punches that I've taken over the years because the, the accumulation of the punches is what takes its toll on your brain because your head's getting bashed about. When he retired as a professional, Ken took up unlicensed boxing, but he doesn't think conditions there were really any worse than in the official game. When we say unlicensed, we're talking about uh, shows that were not uh, um, covered by the British Boxing Board of Control. But I've seen a lot of things happening in British boxing shows and that, that um, they, you wouldn't, they, would not, they would not be allowed in the um, um, unlicensed shows. So you wouldn't say really there was too much difference between no. boxing with a license and boxing? No, not really. I suppose initially when they had these unlicensed shows uh, down, down south, um, they were a bit very crude, like, you know. But um, over the years, um, I think they've, they've tidied them up a wee bit, like. Last night, following surgery for an eye damaged in his last fight, Frank Bruno climbed back into the ring. Fears about the risk he's taking with his eyesight were forgotten in his somewhat farcical first round victory, and a foul blow more typical of the unlicensed boxers for whom Bruno shows unexpected sympathy. Who am I to tell unlicensed boxers what to do? They've got as much right as anybody else to do whatever they've got to do. It's got to be a little bit more sort of like organised as professional boxing because like they can do some serious things to one another and it's going to put boxing in whole in danger. You do you know? feel sorry for the guy who do it? You see, the guys that do it may need the money, so, you know, I know quite a few guys that do it, so, you know what I mean, like, they, they have to do it to get money, so mm. everybody's got to do ducking and diving and surviving in this world, so... I feel sorry for him in a way for doing it, but they've, they've got to survive doing something. Welcome.
The British Boxing Board of Control has brought in new rules to improve medical care at the ringside. But by giving Bruno a license to fight again, the board risks looking just as careless of safety as any unlicensed promoter. They rejected the advice of their chief medical officer. He's worried that damaged boxers mean more pressure to ban boxing. You would never ban boxing. There's no way that you could persuade anyone any more uh, sadly, then you can persuade someone not to smoke or not to drive at 150 miles an hour down a motorway. You know, this is a person's right. It's a, a, we are in a free society. You have two young men going in the ring. They know the odds. They know the problems. They are prepared to do it. And while they're prepared to do it, the board is prepared to control it. And the doctors are there to control it medically. And if you stopped all that, all you would do is to drive it underground and it would continue. With no cover, with no safety, nothing. At St. Bartholomew's Hospital, neurosurgeon Peter Hamlin says it's important to improve fight safety, but he knows it's a sport designed to inflict injury. What lesson should boxers draw from what has happened to Michael Watson? The lessons are that if you're going to box, I think you should try and do it in as safe a circumstances as possible. And that if you want to avoid being injured from boxing, the only way to do so ultimately is not to box. If boxing were banned, the unlicensed game would most likely go still further underground. There'd be more illegal bare knuckle fights like this. Encouraged by huge bets placed by their backers, the contestants fight till they drop. Yet ironically, bare knuckle headbangers may suffer less serious brain damage than boxers wearing gloves. Dave the Bombs top of the bill contest on Monday night. At the wrong end of a rough fight, Dave couldn't hope to lay claim to Lenny McLean's mantle as the new governor. Referee Roy York, well aware of burning popular support for the local hero, faced an uncomfortable moment. With a little help from his promoter and patron, Reg Parker, Roy made a wise decision. All the serious accidents that have happened recently have been in professional fights or amateur fights, well-regulated licensed fights. They haven't happened in unlicensed fights. But you don't know that, Richard. There are so many unlicensed shows going on all over the country. You don't know for sure. You can't tell me that there hasn't been an injury and there hasn't been somebody badly hurt. Look, at, I looked at that tonight, and I've been in there at the tough end of the market. And I can tell you, this is crazy, and somebody's going to get hurt. Come on, for God's sake. We're going back to the, to the dark ages. We've got to stop this sort of thing. That one, two, one. Go on. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Boxing in Britain is not soon going to be counted out. That's it, wasn't it? Yeah. That's better. Keep that elbow down. Again. Go on. Keep your head down. Keep your chin down. That's it. Look for Long before they're legally old enough to spar, kids get an introduction to the sport from enthusiastic adults. I'd like to go into a boxing. Would you really? Yeah. Feeling quite good at it? Yes. Yeah. When you watch it, what do you like about it? when I got all knocked out and they swing punches. Why is that then? Because I, I like doing it myself. Good boy. Most of these boys will drop out of the game, but others will go on to see the self-discipline and potential rewards of boxing as one way to overcome the handicaps of poverty and prejudice. To minimize public criticism of boxing, its official guardians want to ban the outlaws but headbanging in any ring does the same injury. Good safety standards only minimize the damage. And yet some of boxing's casualties, like Robert Darko, still love the sport, still hope to help others enjoy it. To walk again is the main ambition. And then when I can do that sufficiently, then I hope to train the boys at, my, at this club. Um, the youngsters, I know they're all waiting for me to you know, get my act together and train them, so I'd like to do that. Yeah.
the world title. Uh, he's a famous bare knuckle fighter. Everybody knows him. Lenny. Uh, Lenny Lewis. 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 Lenny I've had a license fight for money, and as you say, in the 70s, late 70s and the 80s, I was the absolute governor on the cobbles. No one in England could beat me. Now, I've retired because I had a bit of trouble a couple of years ago. You're using this now? So now yeah. I'm using this, and I'll do a lot of poetry. But let me give you a bit of advice. Always keep yourself fit. Always be strong and train hard, even though bare knuckle fighting don't normally last more than two minutes, but always keep yourself fit and strong. And remember, as you fight, you start getting a reputation, and there'll always be mugs out there looking for a rep. Right. So always be on your guard and always keep strong. If you're strong, you'll always be in front of the other guy. Always remember that. Keep strong and fit, and hate from there to your ankles. Hate. So much. Oh, say we have a fight. I mean, say we have a fight and we donate. I go, oh, he's not a bad guy. He's not a bad yeah. guy. <laughs> he's not a bad guy. You understand? Yeah, yeah right. Now, if. Yeah, now, now. Lands one on you. Also, right. now, before yeah, the fight, yeah. I go, I hate him. I hate him. Why do you hate him? He just interfered with my wife, he interfered with my kids. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Take your head right off, smash everything. Smash everything from here. Smash everything. Because I hate. I left school and uh, I started fighting. Uh, Clubs and pubs, and they went, then he's the toughest guy, and then he's this, and then he's that. And I fight them, and I like this, I like the idea of this. And then, uh, and then some business people put some money together, and I was fighting bare knuckles and bashing everyone, and getting a few quid. I'm getting a few belts yourself, though. Come on. Sorry? A few belts yourself. No, not street fighting. Sometimes. Come never! On. Just two, See, I'm too quick, too mad, and too aggressive. Listen, never. I've never, never, I've never lost a fight on a couple. No, cobbles. no, no, you haven't lost, but I've you've got to take some, some. No, no, to yeah, one some. or two, but when, yeah. you're, when you're cranky and you're having a terror, that ain't, and that, you ain't, because you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're too busy going to work yourself to worry about little bits of pain. Say we're having a fight, you shave up, right? All right. Oh. Right. 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 See, that's how I would do it. Listen, you're about 14 years younger than me. Get your few good, get and get your few good, and, and put it in the summer, because you don't want to, I mean, it's not the greatest game in the world, but it's an easy few quid. Because I'm not saying the first person, see, you're, you're what I call in the game, brown spanking new. You know, I mean, me, I'm, I've been here so long, I've been mining clubs and doing this, and I'm fighting all my life, all my life I've been fighting. Come on, there's got to be a better life than that. I want, I want to know what's in that bowl, because all I keep saying is, people keep going to the bowl getting the cream, I don't get no cream. Right. All I'll get is the egg. Yeah, right. So now I want some cream. I'm entitled to it. So now I want what I'm entitled to. I'm 45 nearly. I want some cream. I think I'm entitled to that, didn't you? Yeah. Sam, there's my hand. There's my heart. <laughs> Be the strongest and the toughest in the game. Because it's an old game. All right, boy? You've I love you.